So let's see. The following diagrams of different phases during meiosis. I mean, what else are we doing? Okay, now first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the phases. So what do we see here? Okay, we see blah blah and we see blah blah and we've got whole chromosomes sitting here. So this tells you that an, th this A is telophase. But which telophase? Well, my chromosomes are still whole, so therefore it is telophase one. Okay, we've uh, we've still we're, now we've got one set of chromosomes. Yeah, there's one set. There's one set. Okay, now B. Ha, you see, there's your centrioles, and they're busy on their way to the poles. Okay. And you've got your spindles forming between them. And crossing over has not taken place yet here. So this is going to be prophase. It's your prep phase, remember. And your chromosomes are about to cross over, so it's prophase 1. How do we know they're about to cross over? Well, they haven't got different color pieces on them. You can't see segments that have swapped, so therefore prophase hasn't taken place. Now, if we look at C, they're pulling away, they're pulling towards the poles, our little chromosomes. So if they're pulling away, and I'm going to write it here so that you remember, if they pull away, it is anaphase, and it's whole chromosomes, they look like little butterflies, so it is anaphase 1. All right, and here, well, there's your equator. I've got two rows of chromosomes. So if there are two rows in the middle at the equator, it means it is metaphase. Meta for middle. Okay, metaphase. But there are two rows, it is metaphase one. And metaphase two will have one row of individual chromosomes. I hope you guys have got this now. You should know it off by heart. If I come and poke you tonight while you're sleeping, I want you to wake up and say, metaphase one has got two rows of chromosomes and metaphase two has got one row. And the centriole and centrum is, and you must know all those terms. Then you'll never have to learn them again. Okay, or you won't have to learn them. Okay, arrange phases A to D in the correct sequence. So remember, we have P, M, A, T. So we have meiosis 1 has P, M, A, T, meiosis 2, P, A, P, M, A, T. That is your process. So let's look. We've got prophase, which is B, and then metaphase, which is D, and anaphase, which is C, and telophase, which is A. There we go. Sorted. How easy is this? Full marks. Yay. Okay, then give two visible reasons why the diagram represents meiosis 1. Okay, now there are a number here. There are it's like three. So let's look at this. Firstly, firstly, if we look at D, because this is the easiest one, we have two rows of chromosomes, okay, at the equator. So therefore, metaphase 1. Then, if we look here, we've got our homologous chromosome pairs move to opposite poles. So remember, this was your homologous chromosomes. They were, they were sitting here. And you've got one moves that way and one moves that way. So each homologous pair has now pulled apart. So during anaphase uh, one. And then the third way is here. Because why? Your chromosome number has halved. And we're just going to write that down now nicely so that you can get full marks for it. Okay, so I would do it like this. I would say in D, the homologous chromosomes um, arrange in two rows at the equator. Okay. Then in C, yeah, each homologous chromosome from the pair pulls to an opposite pole. So at C, each chromosome 
um, of a homologous, oh my gosh, I think if I got 50 cents for every time I wrote homologous in my life, I'd be a millionaire. Homologous chromosome pair, and I'm writing pair, or you can say homologous chromosomes, um, moves to an opposite pole. Okay, they've moved to opposite poles. And they only ask for two, but the third one, just in case you, so that you've always got it, options, is that you've got your chromosome, um, sorry, number is halved. Okay, it becomes halved. So if you have 30, 40, uh, uh, 46 chromosomes, you're going to have it halved, which is 23 and 23. You've now got the beginnings of your gametes. Right now, how many chromosomes will be present in each gamete of this species? Now, in this species, this little guy is only going to have, it starts off here, so diploid, it's 2N, it is going to have four chromosomes. One, two, three, four. So in its diploid state, what is it going to have? Only two chromosomes. Do you see that, people? Remember, gametes are haploid. They're not diploid. They're haploid. They've got to be halved. So if we join the male and the female together, we end up with a diploid chromosome. Can you imagine if the male cell was diploid and the female cell was diploid, then the baby would be 4N. That would be very strange. All right. So... How many chromosomes? There would only be two. Why? And I'm going to put here gametes are haploid. Okay. Now describe the process that takes place during phase B that will lead to genetic variation in the offspring. So let's just quickly check B. Okay, that's prophase. In other words, they want you to talk about crossing over. I'm not going to write it out again. I did it just now. So, but we're going to recap it. So, for crossing over, you've got your two homologous chromosomes, paternal, maternal. And the, chromo the adjacent chromosomes, so the chromosomes, that, the chromatids that are next to each other, cross over. And where they touch, those chromatids, where they touch is called the chysma. Okay. So adjacent chro uh, chromatids uh, um, overlap, and the point at where they touch is called the chysma, right? Then, where they are and they touch, what happens? The DNA segments are swapped from one chromosome, the chromatid, to the other chromatid, so that we have a swapping of the paternal and maternal uh, uh, segments. What happens then? There is a recombination on each chromatid, okay, of the paternal and maternal segments, all right, and that is what is going to lead to genetic variation. So we've done it, and you can rewind and you can go and check the whole question that we did on um, crossing over. You must know crossing over and how it works, okay? And then, yeah, name and describe the error in meiosis that leads to Down syndrome. Okay, now I'm going to do, um, let, let me show you this. Okay, let me just go down here. I want you to see before we write the words. Okay, we start off with a diploid cell, which has 46 chromosomes. Okay, that's normal. All right, this can be a male or a female, doesn't matter. They are now going to produce during meiosis, this is meiosis one, okay, they are going to produce haploid gametes. Then we have meiosis two. Okay, now what happens during this era is we have non dis junk shin. Okay, so non means not, doesn't happen, and disjunction means to 
open up, to, to, to separate. Okay. If there's non-disjunction, it means that they don't separate when they should be separating. So non-disjunction, okay, and in this case for Down syndrome, it's non-disjunction of chromosome pair 21. Okay, now we've got our 46. During this non-disjunction, we're going to have 22 and 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening to my pen here? It's just gone my sugar. So let's just, okay. We're going to have 22 here. But this 22, we're going to have non-disjunction of chromosome 24. So we're also going to have two um, chromosome 20, 21. Okay. So we've got two and 22 gives us 24. And here, we still only have 22. So we're going to have 24, 24, 22, 22. Now, when this gamete, or this one, joins with a normal, just give us some space, and it joins with a normal, um, either one, can join with a normal haploid 23 chromosome little gamete, so egg cell, sperm cell, doesn't matter. When they join, and they join during fertilization, we're going to have... Instead of 46, we have uh, um, 47 chromosomes. And what is 47 chromosomes? It means that there is what we call a trisomy of chromosome 21. Or you can just make it easy and say trisomy means three. You're going to get one from the normal gamete, and you're getting two from the non-disjunction commute. And it's trisomy 3, 21. So you can just say trisomy 21. So just to go, go through what that is, we're going to say non-disjunction takes place, okay, during meiosis 1, anaphase 1, where one homologous set of chromosomes moves to one pole, and the other chromosome, uh, um, and the other pole, remains empty, so none move to the other pole. When that then forms your gametes, one, gam one set of gametes will have 24 chromosomes and the other will only have 22. When that 24 gam uh, 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 chromosome gamete joins with a normal gamete, which is 23 chromosomes, the result is 47 and trisomy 21. And that is what is going to result in a Down syndrome child.